As senators, as senators leave the chamber, the Senate will now consider the proposal from Senator Rustin, which is also shown at item 15 on today's order of business. Is the proposal supported? Uh, with the, thank you. With the concurrence of the Senate, the clerks will set the clock in line with the inform, informal arrangements made by the whips, and I call Senator McKenzie. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Acting Deputy President. It was a very, very heavy heart as a Victorian uh, senator. Senator McKenzie, uh, ignore both myself and the clerk just for this one moment. And Senator McKenzie, you have the call. <laughs> Thank you very much, Madam Acting Deputy President. And it's with a very heavy heart as a proud uh, Senator for the great state of Victoria, a fantastic state known for its proud sporting heritage and traditions. In fact, it's, our capital is known as the sporting capital of this country. We host international events such as the Australian Open, the Grand Prix. I could go on and on. We are renowned. Uh, the Melbourne Cup, the race that stops the nation and indeed the world, uh, and the AFL Grand Final, thank you, go Saints. We are very, very good at hosting international events. But I rise tonight to speak on this matter of public importance that the failure of the Anthony Albanese Labor government is to stand up for our incredible athletes and stop Premier Daniel Andrews from cancelling the 2026 Commonwealth Games and the damage to our international sovereignty and sporting reputation resulting from the cancellation of the event. And on the 18th of July this year, our national, not just Victoria's, not just Melbourne's, our national reputation as a sporting uh, and business capital was dealt an enormous blow by the sudden decision uh, of the Labor State Premier to cancel the Commonwealth Games. This was an unprecedented decision. Only World War II had stopped the Commonwealth Games uh, prior. This decision by Premier Andrews was one he doesn't regret, was one he didn't even think about, if you take his public comments uh, at what he says, didn't give him a moment's concern. Shame. But I can tell you the very proud residents and local communities of Geelong, of Bendigo, of Ballarat, of Shepparton and of the Latrobe Valley were very much looking forward to be being on the global stage and showcasing what they could do when it comes to hosting the Commonwealth Games. And the Labor Party will stand up today. You'll hear those playing along at home. will stand up tonight and talk about it's the Com Games. Who cares? Well, I'll tell you who cares. The young athletes that left yesterday and today for Trinidad and Tobago, the young Australians who've headed off for the Youth Commonwealth Games. Turns out their sports minister, I don't know if she's even posted about it, doesn't care. But the Commonwealth Games is part of a pipeline of events that if you are a young athlete in this country, you look forward to participating in and competing against the best in the world, particularly if you're a netballer. It's a premier event, and good luck to the Diamonds uh, during the World Cup at the moment, but indeed uh, our track athletes. You heard Senator Wong stand up today during question time. Uh, you know, well, this was a decision for the Premier. Yes, but it has national and international implications. That is why you had the United Kingdom Sports Minister on our local TVs here. These are our allies in more than just the Commonwealth sporting uh, events, in more than just the ashes we uh, challenged them to uh, over this last month. These are our strategic partners as well. And our sporting alliances bring economic benefits, bring diplomatic benefits. And the fact that a Premier can wake up with no evidence and claim that the costs have blown out, not table a document, not have gone through a public process, uh, indeed the Commonwealth Games Federation of Australia rejects his figures, and this is a state government who has continually undermined the rollout of this game, which is why this chamber set up a Senate inquiry in April to question 
what was going wrong with the Victorian Commonwealth Games. And now we know. We know the Premier was just planning a cheap political trick to win a state election last year. And he's being called out uh, by the Commonwealth Games Federation, no less. The National Party, uh, Martin Cameron and Gail Broad in Bendigo, have stood up for their local communities, have championed the hosting of the Games. It's up to Anthony Albanese to bring the Premiers together and find thank an you, Australian Senator solution. McKenzie. Senator Green. Uh, thank you very much, um, Madam Acting Deputy President. I can say, um, <clears throat> before I begin, um, thank you for the way you managed the chamber previously under the previous um, debate. It's really disappointing that, that conversations that are important to our national um, conversation uh, descend into those types of arguments. And I just want to put it on the record um, that when it comes to the decisions of the Victorian government um, and the debate that we're about to have, it's we're very clear that from our government's point of view that this was a decision of the Victorian government. Um, it's disappointing, and we've, we've put that on the record too. It's disappointing news for Victorians. Um, and it's disappointing for athletes and coaches that were looking forward to Australia's um, Commonwealth Games uh, and sporting fans alike. But we maintain um, that it's a little odd for those opposite to bring this as the first matter of public importance um, uh, for this sitting week and to bring it to the Federal Senate where um, it has to be said uh, we don't have much... Um, uh, power over the over the um, decisions of the Victorian government, um, and it is clear that this was a decision of the Victorian government. The Victorian government didn't engage with the former Australian government during the bid process, and they didn't engage, um, and they um, nor in the relation to um, its withdrawal. Um, however, we are prepared to work in good faith, um, and the. Prime Minister had agreed in principle to the standard major events provisions that fall within Australian government responsibilities. Uh, we were willing to do what was needed and required from an Australian government point of view. Um, but we also know that um, this is a decision um, that was made by the Victorian government and um, it's, uh, it is an odd thing for those opposite to bring it here um, and, and in somehow insinuate that our government had anything or to do with the decision itself or could, as the motion says, stop Premier Daniel Andrews from cancelling the Games. I'm not sure what mechanism those opposite uh, would like us to have used and I'm not sure at what cost um, those opposite are referring to um, taxpayers being on the line for, but it is very concerning that those opposite are trying to make this into a political um, a debate in the national parliament. We have so many issues that we are dealing with um, across the country. I think it's interesting that the, um, those over, uh, on the other side of the chamber are um, suggesting that somehow um, our international reputation has been damaged by the cancelling of this event. Um, we know that those opposite don't have a great track record when it comes to our international reputation, whether it's Peter Dutton, and, um, the, the Leader of the Opposition, or former Prime Minister um, Scott Morrison, um, overheard joking about Pacific Island nations having water lapping at their door, um, uh, whether it's the, the debacle with the French submarines and um, when the former Prime Minister um, lied to the, um, former Prime, uh, the, the Prime Minister um, uh, of France. Uh, even the former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull confirmed that this was his assessment of the um, situation. And no one can really forget that when it comes to Australia's international standing, nobody did more damage than those opposite uh, when it came to their uh, 22 failed policies on climate change. So we're not going to sit here and take lectures from those opposite about our international rep reputation, which it has to be said has finally been restored under the Albanese government. But it's also finally, if I can say, the height of hypocrisy to be lectured about community sporting infrastructure and how um, important it is to communities by literally by the minister responsible for sports rights and by the previous government responsible for sports rorts, unapologetic about sports rorts, 
a program that systematically undermined the ability of governments to actually fund sporting infrastructure and diverted funds away from deserving community organisations. Senator Mackenzie referred to cheap political tricks used to win elections. Well, that's exactly what the former minister um, used sports rorts for. So we welcome any debate about the funding of community infrastructure because nobody has forgotten those colour-coded spreadsheets. No one has forgotten sports rorts. And when it comes to what the Albanese government is doing, we're supporting our athletes. We're making sure that we are funding the Olympic Games and we are getting Thank on with you, the job. Senator. Green. Senator Cox. Thank you. Acting Deputy President, I rise to speak in support of the cancellation of the 2026 Commonwealth Games. In fact, I'm pleased that Premier Dan Andrews had the foresight to cancel the Games and invest the money in the community where it's actually needed. And I wish other Premiers had the guts to do the same thing for other sporting events such as the uh, Brisbane Olympics. In fact, uh, that spending billions of dollars on a 12-day sporting event is not tenable when you've got people sleeping on the street or people who have to choose between heading their homes and eating. This money is much better spent on health, housing, education and providing infrastructure, in fact fixing roads or investing in our regions. And I could go on with other areas where this money could be better spent. Um, hosting the Commonwealth Games or the Olympics does not bring all the benefits that people uh, claim, and the boost to tourism is not to scale um, that's needed to justify the spend. These events notor notoriously run over budget, and in many cases the locals actually don't want them there. The most extreme example of this is the Summer Olympics in Montreal in 1976. Montreal actually finished paying off the debt that they incur incurred by putting on this event in 2006. That's 40 years uh, that it took them to pay off the debt for Montreal to put on the Olympics. 40 years of money being taken away from critical government infrastructure and services. And while um, this is obviously an example of things going very wrong, this event marked a new era for big sporting events such as the Commonwealth Games, Olympic bids or the in fact FIFA World Cup. Um, bids that uh, to host these sporting events became bigger and bigger. Um, more money needed to be spent, more infrastructure was actually promised around these. This is a gamble that ram uh, rarely pays off. And in 2010, India budgeted $250 million for the Commonwealth Games, and that actually ended up costing them $11 billion. So I think it was a very wise move of the Victorian government to quit while they were ahead and spend this money where it was actually needed the most. Events like this are important and it is an opportunity for unity for Australia to cheer on their favourite athletes. However, the suggestion that this cancellation damages our international sovereignty is actually a bit of a joke. And I'm not going to stand here and be lectured by uh, those opposite and others about uh, international sovereignty and the damage to that. Uh, we are in a cost of living crisis and I'm also pleased that no other state or territory government has chosen to put um, education, housing or health funding at risk or on the back burner for the Commonwealth Games. Thank you, Senator Cox. Senator Kenavan. Uh, thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. Uh, well, uh, uh, it is a great shame and disappointment to the regional communities of Victoria that uh, the Commonwealth Games uh, will not be going ahead in their towns. And it would have been a great source of pride for Geelong, for Bendigo, for Ballarat, for the Gippsland area and other regions across Victoria to host uh, such an event, the first time it will be hosted by uh, country towns of, of that size. Um, the issue, though, before us uh, as, a, as the federal parliament is that, in terms of the rest of the world, uh, it was not really Bendigo or Ballarat or, or Geelong hosting the Commonwealth Games. They, the rest of the world probably had not heard of our detailed plans for the Commonwealth Games. The rest of the world thought Australia was hosting the Commonwealth Games in, in 2026. Uh, and uh, for the first time I've ever witnessed uh, a major event like a Commonwealth Games or Olympics or a World Soccer World Cup, for the first time I know of, uh, a country has reneged on its promise to host uh, such a, a major sporting event. It is such a shame uh, and so disappointing uh, for that to happen in this country, uh, given that until that decision, until the shocking decision from the Victorian Premier, we were known around the world for our capacity and ability to uh, to, to hold these types of events at great efficiency, great success, great harmony 
uh, with the rest of the world. And I particularly dispute the other contributions, some of the contributions we made here, that somehow it's a complete waste of money to hold these events. Uh, they are great events to build our nation, to build our community, our country. Uh, I still fondly remember the Sydney Olympics in my formative years. It was a fantastic event for our nation uh, and something I think most Australians are very, very proud that we successfully hosted here in this country. I hope we are similarly proud of the Brisbane uh, Olympics in 2032. But this, this decision now has, has unfortunately sullied our reputation uh, for to hosting these events. It was the, the Victorian Premier who promised these games. It wasn't imposed on him. It wasn't forced on him. And he hasn't uh, had to try and fix a, a problem uh, not of his own making. He promised this. He promised this only uh, less than a year ago ahead of the Victorian election. And, and even then, he should have known, should have done any sums better, and he hasn't. So it, it's a terrible, terrible outcome. Uh, for the Victorian people, for the Australian people. And given that national implication, given how it's harmed our national reputation, it really is incumbent on the national prime minister and the federal government to try to fix things. I'm not standing here claiming, and we're not standing here claiming, that it was the Albanese government that has got us into this mess. But as the national government, it is their job to help us get out of this mess. And this wash their hands, Pontius Pilate approach to this problem is not good enough for the reputation of our country. When you're the Prime Minister, the buck stops with you. Not every problem that comes across your desk is yours, but you wanted the big job, you, 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 you got the big title on the desk, you should have to come up to the plate here and have some answers for the Australian people about how we're going to solve these things. If nothing else, the Commonwealth Games Association has been completely left in the lurch and as one of the larger members of that association, uh, one of very, the, the most successful sporting nation in that, uh, that organisation, we surely have some responsibility to help see a successful 2026 Commonwealth Games proceed. As a country, I think we have that responsibility, given it was one of our states that promised to hold it. It's reneging on that promise. Even if the Games are not to be held in this country, given it's only a few years away, surely we have some responsibility here to help, to at least help and assist the Commonwealth Games to continue, because it's a great institution uh, that we should like and hope to succeed uh, in the future. And I think definitely this, this chamber should be putting pressure on the federal government, the Victorian government, to do what they can to help uh, fix up this, this terrible mess of Dan Andrews making. Uh, I chair the Rural and Regional Affairs and Transport Committee. We are conducting a review and inquiry into uh, the Commonwealth Games at the moment. We're doing that before this shocking decision. And uh, we are going to continue. Uh, to pursue that inquiry, for one, to hear from the people of uh, regional Victoria who have been completely dudded by this decision, to hear from them directly in a way that Dan Andrews certainly has. One of the most shocking things in this decision, there was no consultation, there was no discussion with people impacted by it. It was just dropped uh, into the media like a grenade. We will do that. We will consult with those people. But we will also try and come up with solutions here about how we can help make sure that the Commonwealth Games in 2026, wherever it is held, uh, is a success uh, because it's a great, uh, great event that has a, there's a proud heritage and history, and we, as a country that's participated in that history, should have a responsibility to make sure it continues to be a success in the future. Senator Walsh. Uh, thank you very much, Acting De uh, Deputy President. Uh, well, can I start by saying that I can, of course, completely understand the disappointment of athletes and coaches about the Commonwealth Games. Uh, and this is a decision that the Victorian government made after considering all the facts on the table, uh, and we do understand their decision. Uh, and I can also tell you that sport will survive and indeed thrive in Victoria uh, and in this country um, going forward, um, because this government, uh, we are committed to our athletes, to our coaches and to training staff. Um, our commitment to sport is without equal. We will continue to ensure that our athletes have every opportunity to compete at home and abroad. Uh, and indeed, there are no less than 22 major sporting events coming down the green and gold highway right now, um, all leading to the 2032 Brisbane Olympics and Paralympics. Um, whether it's the Rugby World Cup, the Netball World Cup, the Men's T20 or even the BMX World Championships. We are lucky to be hosting four Women's World Cups across the next five years. 
So I think it's safe to say that our international sporting reputation uh, is well and truly safe and is well and truly intact. We are helping Australians excel on the sporting field at every level and in every postcode, from the playground to the podium. Only last week we announced an, an additional $20 million uh, in funding for the Paris 2024 Olympic and Paralympic Preparation Fund. This investment in our athletes will help Australians qualify and assist with transport costs for the Games. This is a funding injection that will help teams like our wheelchair rugby team who needed support to reach the World Cup in October. We know that sport is bigger than any one event, and ultimately our sporting events need to be good investments that provide value for money and provide lasting benefits to the community. Uh, and can I take the opportunity to commend the Victorian government for their focus on continuing to deliver lasting investments in housing and infrastructure for regional communities. This is a focus and commitment that the federal government shares. Uh, and the hypocrisy of those opposite really can't go without mention today. Um, they've come into this chamber. Uh, they demand to see more action on the cost of living crisis today. Uh, and now they ask that billions of taxpayer dollars be spent on the Commonwealth Games. They insist repeatedly that sports and politics should not mix, and then they wish to play politics with what is a state government decision here in the chamber today. Well, rather than playing politics, we are currently focused on hosting the largest women's sporting event in the world, the FIFA Women's World Cup. Uh, and we are hosting it very successfully, can I add. The Matildas opening match reached almost 5 million people. We committed more than 84 million to support the bidding, the delivery and legacy of the Women's World Cup here in Australia. It's broken records already in crowd attendance, number of countries competing and spectators watching at home and around the world. It's raised the profile of women's sport to an unprecedented level, not just here in Australia, but also internationally. It's the kind of event that we know will have impacts um, for generations to come in the girls and boys who are inspired to put on the green and gold. Uh, so can I finish by saying, um, go Matildas tonight. Um, we had a sellout crowd for the Friendly uh, in Melbourne um, against France uh, in Victoria, uh, and another sellout tonight. So uh, news of the demise of Victorian and Australian sport is greatly exaggerated by those opposite. Um, so again, I reject the assertions of disaster of those opposite. Um, this was no doubt a tough decision for our athletes, um, but I know uh, that Australia will land a successful Commonwealth Games campaign with our athletes. Uh, just as I know, Victoria will continue to be the home of Australian sport, from schools to stadiums and everywhere in between. Um, the Victorian government, they've given their reasons for the decision that they've made. Uh, it remains a state matter. And again, I can tell you, Victorian sport, um, it will survive and thrive. Senator Babette. Thank you. Now, if money management was a Commonwealth Games event, Victorian Premier Andrews would finish stone cold last. Now, the Premier, he deserves no credit for cancelling the Games. He should never have bid for the Games in the first place. Now, Victoria was already broke, and still is broke, when Premier Andrews announced his intention to host the event. But the, but the, 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 the uh, Premier, Mr Daniel Andrews, he has never, he has never been in a hole, but he did not insist that he could make deeper. He's useless. Now, he insisted on adding another $2.6 billion of debt by hosting the Games. He now says that the Games were going to cost $6 billion, or was it $7 billion? You know what? Even today, the Premier can't nail down the cost to within $1,000 million. Now the whole thing's obviously been cancelled. Premier Andrews, he behaves like he deserves a medal. He doesn't. Now, was the Commonwealth Games a ploy by the Premier to convince people in the regions to vote for him? 
hey, could have been. And then after the voters put him on the podium, he just walks away, walks away from the game's contract at a cost of a taxpayer yet to be disclosed. Now, small businesses, they invested in anticipation of these games. It should have been a boon for country towns. Instead, they are the victims of the Premier's incompetence. Premier Andrews has embarrassed the state. He has embarrassed the nation. He is the most irresponsible, reckless Premier in Australia's history. The man's face gives me PTSD. I can't stand the guy. Thank you. Senator Henderson. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. Well, as a Geelong-based Victorian senator, I am absolutely appalled by Premier Andrews' decision in concert with the Albanese government, because we have brought this matter of public importance to the Senate to call on this government to take a stand for Victorian regional communities. And what we have seen so far from this government is spineless, is callous, is demonstrating no care or regard for regional communities, Geelong, Ballarat, Bendigo, Gippsland, Shepparton, has treated regional Victoria with absolute contempt. And it is a shocking indictment on the spinelessness of this pathetic Albanese government that it will not stand up to this deceptive, callous Victorian Premier and say this is not good enough. It's not good enough. And, Acting Deputy President, you've just been uh, making a contribution. You've said you don't think this is going to hurt our international reputation. And I have to say to you, have you not been watching what's been going on? Have you not read the papers? Senator Henderson, resume your seat. Um, Senator Ciccone, do you have a point of order? I do. Um, Acting Deputy President, um, the resume your seat, Senator Henderson, just for a moment. Thank, Thank you. you. The remarks by Senator Henderson are clearly a reflection on your contribution just before, and I'd uh, say that's against the standing orders, and she should withdraw. <clears throat> um, it does seem slightly irregular to be directing those comments to the chair, but I'll just seek advice. I'll just seek advice from the clerk. Uh, just order in the chamber while I um, get advice from the clerk. Thank you. Um, Senator Henderson, just for the convenience of the chamber, if you'd move on um, from referencing um, my, my former role a few minutes ago. Well, Senator Walsh, Senator I wasn't Henderson. reflecting on you as the acting deputy I, president. That's fine. But I am appalled at the suggestion in this chamber, in this debate, that this decision has not reflected on our international reputation. We are an international laughing stock as a result of the decision of the Victorian Premier. And this Albanese government did nothing. The member for Corio, the member for Karangamite, the member for Bendigo, the member for Ballarat did absolutely nothing to stand up for their communities as our reputations were trashed across the world. For the people of regional Victoria, the Games was a critical opportunity of a lifetime, not just to see their local heroes compete, but to grow their businesses, to take advantage of the significant economic boost in Geelong, Ballarat, Bendigo, Gippsland and Shepparton. And those plans, those hopes, those dreams have been trashed. The coalition has always recognised how important sport is to our nation. We work so hard as a government to secure so many important events. The FIFA Women's World Cup is on right now. The 2032 Olympic and Paralympic Games, the 27 Netball World Cup. Daniel Andrews' decision to abandon the 2026 Commonwealth Games is an insult to Australian athletes, an insult to regional Victoria 
and an insult to the Australian people. Working hand in glove with Premier Andrews, Prime Minister Albanese and this city-centric government have broken our hearts. Premier Andrews is walking all over the top of members opposite and this government. He is laughing. He could not care less. And this spineless government just stands by and fails to stand up for regional Victoria, fails to stand up for our country. This is appalling. We saw it again in action just a few days ago. The Victorian government, this tyrannical government, as it's turning out to be, bans gas from 2024 for new builds. And what do senators and members in the other place do? Members of the government, they do nothing. I cannot believe that gas is going to be banned for new connections. And this spineless government does nothing to stand up Victoria. We don't believe a word Premier Andrews said. Look what he did with the East West Link. He cancelled that contract. That cost Victorians more than a billion dollars. We will get to the bottom of this through our, through our Senate inquiry. We will get to the bottom of this deceptive, callous, devious state Labor government, aided and abetted by this unprincipled and spineless Albanese government. We have had enough of being trodden on. We have had enough. We are not going to tolerate it. And shame on the member for Corio, the Deputy Prime Minister, the member for Karangamai, Bendigo and Ballarat, who did Thank nothing you, to Senator stand up Henderson. for us. The time for this discussion has expired.